Hello, welcome back to the ministry. I got another word for you. So, the Lord showed me this. I was listening to scripture being read by one of the ministers that I listened to. And she was making this point. And when she was reading the names of the disciples, I heard something I hadn't recognized before. Because sometimes when, see, we don't understand. It's the hearing and the hearing and the hearing of the word of God. Sometimes we decipher things in hearing that we miss when we're reading. So I was listening to her read the scripture and she made a point of saying, Judas, son of James. I was like, whoa, whole revelation hit me. I was like, wait, Judas was James's son, which means was Judas always supposed to be allotted as one of the disciples? I need you to hear me and hear me clearly. Remember what happened with Abraham and Lot. Come on, I need you to hear me. Think about this. Now, we know Judas was a necessary element, but I need you to hear me. Judas was James's son. So, Judas only really got picked up because of the fact that when God, when Jesus said, come on, and they came, James was going. So he, I'm assuming that just like Lot and Abraham, Abraham, let me take Lot with me. Can, can my son Judas come with me too? Can, can he come? <laughs> and it's like, come. If y'all come, I'm, uh, I'll go. Let's go. And you think, of course. Now, remember how I did the word previously talking about the Judas was necessary, right? Because Judas was supposed to train you, right? Judas was necessary. God was always going to use that individual. But you know, somebody made a comment on that video and made absolute perfect sense. That some of these people, we didn't have to deal with our Judas situation. Hey, we been wise enough and some of y'all this is what's happened to some of y'all spouses and some of it has happened to you too that you have associated yourself with people that because this person hung around them oh that's my friend's friend let's bring them on and for some of you it was some of the people that have been the the the, the jezebels and the people that have been operating under the vocal voices over you that have tried to prevent you from getting where you had to go with people that somebody brought on. I never forget it was somebody I knew years ago and they was working a job and they got passed over for a promotion because of the fact that their boss's son worked for the company. So they gave the job to the boss's son and not them. Why? Not only seniority, but association. But greatly look at the position that you're in walking with God. You get the inheritance because you are associated with the Lord and Jesus Christ. So God's going to automatically pull you into your position because of the association to his bloodline and inheritance. That works both ways. For the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, but those wicked folks... That sat up there operating in the Judas position. That was only there because. Was, was Judas only really there because James. But God orchestrated to be that way. Because sometimes you invite your problem into the situation. But what does it always say in the word? What the enemy meant for evil, God will use for your good. Now, granted, looking at the situation, it may not have looked good for Jesus, but that's exactly what God needed for it to happen that way. Even right down to the fact, because let's look at it. Look at it. Technically, it wasn't Judas that could have gotten Jesus killed. He was the one that was set up to get him arrested. But it was Pompous Pilate, pay close attention, that was sitting in the judge's seat. And it was the fact that they had the choice between Barabbas being released and Judas. I mean, Jesus. 
So technically, all Judas did was get him to the point that he was before the, the, the judgment seat. That's all Judas really did if you pay attention to it. And God's unfolding this for me. It was Pompous Pilate that was in, in the juror, uh, the, the, the actual judge's seat that actually made the point of making the decision. And it had to go in that direction because even he was sitting there. He's the one that had to make the decision and he was questioning the fact. He was like, but he didn't do nothing. Why am I, why do you want me to, to persecute? He didn't. But Barabbas did this. Why? Get him, get him. It was, so technically it wasn't Judas that made sure it was Pompous Pilate, but Judas from the guilt of the situation killed himself or ended up being, uh, yeah, he, he threw himself on the sword. So yeah. So the last person that actually, everybody gets on Judas for that, but it, you know, it was Pompous Pilate that was the last one to make the decision, right? And he didn't even want to make it. And you know, that was God because of the fact that they were about to let him go in. <laughs> But it had to be the fact that he went to the cross. He had to go to the cross. Don't nobody pay attention to that. I, I, and the Lord just brought that to my revelation. It's like everybody get everybody go in on Judas. Because yes, he betrayed him to get him up there. But guess what? Papa's father was the one that had to make the choice. <laughs> and he didn't even want to choose that way. But because of the order of operation that God needed, he had to go that way. They had to choose between Barabbas and him. And they ended up choosing Jesus. It had to be that way. Because it could have been in a scenario that, that uh, Pompous Pilate said, he's innocent, kill, kill Barabbas. But there wouldn't have been a demonstration of God's glory had Barabbas went to the cross. And Jesus had been like, oh. What did you think about that? Let me just think about it. I want you to pause on that for a moment. Jesus' blood had to be shed on the cross. Because Jesus, remember, Jesus was sitting there crying to the Lord the night before. Blood tears from the level of stress he was under, under the fact that, though you slay me, I'm not going to trust you. <laughs> if you tell me I have to go, I'll go. Because even Papa's pilot, Papa's pilot was the last decision maker. He hadn't even been arrested at that point when he was sitting there crying in prayer before the Lord. You just hadn't shown up with the people that was going to. Oh, hey. Yeah. And then Peter denying him and all that kind of stuff. So it's the orchestration that God, and there was people in, in those situations and scenarios, Peter didn't have to deny him. Judas didn't have, if Judas had never been there, who's to say that God wouldn't use somebody else? Because when is your destiny? Remember how, when, uh, what you call it? God told Elisha, I got 7,000 or 5,000 other prophets. If Judas wasn't there, we'd have seen another name in Judas's place. Best believe. Gotta have somebody else. We get on Judas, but technically it was a series of multiple scenarios that led to Ju to Jesus ending up on the cross. But everybody gets on Judas because he was sitting up there lying, philandering, and taking the money from the ministry. So he was an easy target. He wasn't doing right, no way. So, <laughs> but what if it had been somebody else that? Would have, would have James had chosen not to bring his son with him? Who would have been sitting in that position? Would my, would Matthias have been there earlier? And had Matthias been there, who's to say that God wouldn't have used Matthias anyway? Because it's about what needed to be done. And, and who's to say that it wouldn't have done, wouldn't have happened? It wouldn't have been, uh, uh, help me God. That if Matthias had been there earlier, that maybe it was something that Matthias would have said in the same way that Peter denied Jesus three times, that Matthias might have said something that would have still led Jesus to the cross if he'd been there earlier. So you don't think about these things. 
if it was determined that they wanted Jesus, God wanted Jesus on the cross, his end result would have always been that he would have ended up on the cross. Judas didn't make the difference except for the fact that he was the one that God ended up using to get him to where he needed to go. It could have been anybody. <laughs> could have been somebody that wasn't part of the disciples that said something because they overheard something and monitored. End result was always going to be that Jesus was going to end up on the cross. If Pompous Pilate wasn't even there that day and somebody else had been there. It may have been a second king scenario. What is it? Second Kings 18, 19. It talks about the fact that they had to bring enough questions against the individual in order for people to turn on them. Yeah. Which technically what they were trying to do to bring Pompous Pilate to change his mind so that Jesus would go on the cross. I was so not trying to go through all of this, but dude, this is what God wanted me to say. So it isn't particularly that factor. Because yeah, Judas could have been the lot in this scenario that James brought with him. Something very simple. Wouldn't nobody pay attention to. Ain't no, it, it went over everybody's head. But God kind of tapped my ear on that. I was like, wait a minute. Judas was a lot in this situation. What? <laughs> what? So understand. There's a reason for everything. Everybody gets on him. Yes, he is guilty for stealing the money. Absolutely. That was a sin that he was going to end up having to deal with anyway. And some people needed to change their hearts. Absolutely. He needed to change his heart. And who knows what blasphemy and stuff he was talking about, about Jesus behind uh, James and everybody else's back. Which caused him to end up falling on the sword anyway. That's what's been happening to you. Some of y'all. Y'all been praying for folks and they've been cursing you behind your, your back. And some of them curse you to, the, to your face, but you don't want to hear the fact that they cursed you to your face. You still pray for them. Because God said, keep praying for them. Though, though your enemy slap you about 15 times in the face. Forgive them. 17 times 7. 17 times 7. Turn your cheek again. You slap me again, but turn your cheek again. Talking about you, God sees all those things. God sees the things that the people did. God sees the people that are trying to operate under uh, marine kingdom spirits and all this kind of stuff. It's not them it's the spirit operating through them because they got holes and the enemy was like, he got a hole of you, just use it. Because that's how these, a lot of these people ended up in the positions that they were in. But that was pretty much the word that I wanted to really give y'all to get y'all thinking about those types of things. So there is a value to this. Another scripture that pop up on my uh, phone talking about uh, life with eternal value. Proverbs 12 and 6. The word. <laughs> Go ahead, God. The words of the wicked are to lie. What did Judas, Judas do? God be having stuff. He be helping me in these broadcasts when he popped them scriptures up there. Because it's like, oh, that's what you want me to say, God. Oh, cool. <laughs> I know he be in these things <laughs> when he do stuff like that. I wanted to give you a little some help right here. It's like, cool, God. I like God. Look at God. High five. <laughs> So I just thought I would share that because the Lord put it on my heart right quick. Put it on my heart the other day when I was listening to that. And I was like, I need to share that with the folks. And he brought that whole situation because I didn't even have all that written about the pompous pilot stuff. So understand, God's going to orchestrate you to your destiny one way or another. Same thing for your spouse. Y'all been sitting up there crying, falling out and all this kind of stuff. God's going to get that man where he needs to be. 
he'll be where he needs to be at the time he need to be there. And this is just something that the Lord is putting on my heart to say right now. He'll be where he needs to be. Just like Jesus was up on that cross, your spouse going to be where he needs to be. He's going to get to you when he need to get to you. But it, it, guess what? Some of them are going through a level of spiritual crucifixion right now and he can't come right now. <laughs> but he need, God needed to crucify those things because some of those things needed to die in that man's heart before he got to you. So I hope this blessed you and gave you a little bit of a different viewpoint on some of these things. But I got to go. I got some stuff I got to take care of. So I hope this blessed you. But until next time, much love, faith, peace, and blessings. Bye-bye.